everybody. Like Trisha said, um, my name is Laura. I work here at the library and I help run this Crafty Adult series. So we're going to be working on collage today. And to give you an overview of kind of how the class is going to be structured, um, I'm going to go over the materials you should have uh, ready for your collage. And then we're going to hop over into a PowerPoint presentation where we're just going to go over some um, collage inspiration. So maybe get you a little bit inspired to work with the materials that you have. And hopefully that will give you a little bit of time if you don't have all your materials ready to do so. So we're going to pop over to my workspace. Sorry about that. Okay. So over here on my workspace, I have got my instructions um, as well as the Mod Podge. Now I really like to use Mod Podge for collage work. If you don't have this, that's fine. You can certainly use a glue stick or use just some regular old craft glue and that'll work fine for your collage. You're not going to get that nice luster or finish on the top, but you will still be able to make a collage without it. If you have a kit from the library, we provided you with this little mini montage. All right, other things you want to have handy. Ephemera. So when I say ephemera, I mean the thing that you'll be collaging. So I've got my pack here from the idea store, which if you have a pack from the library, uh, we source all of these uh, ephemera materials from the idea store collection. So there's really fun, crazy stuff. Um, so I've got my packet of ephemera ready. Other things you'll need for a collage. A pair of scissors is very helpful to have, as well as an exacto knife, which I don't have on my surface, so I'll need to grab that. Um, a foam brush. You could also use a regular old paintbrush. A foam brush is going to help you when you're doing your top coat on your collage so you don't see the brush strokes um, in your final product. Foam brush is handy, that will be provided for you. If you just have a regular paintbrush, that'll be fine as well. Um, something I didn't mention in the um, handout, but it's always handy to have just in your craft in general, some tape. I like to have some scotch tape handy if I want to um, just kind of quickly attach some, uh, something together. Now, if you're going to be using an exacto knife, you want to be mindful about cutting uh, what surface you're cutting on. I like to use a mat. My mat is clearly very well used. I use it for a lot of different things. Um, but this kind of craft mat will be uh, perfect. If you have one, I would recommend grabbing it. If you don't, you can just use a piece of cardboard. Um, I would recommend not corrugated cardboard because that will, uh, when you're using a knife, it's going to shred it. And then some of those little pieces are going to get into your Mod Podge, and that might not be, um, it's not ideal. So if you have some non-corrugated cardboard, that's going to be a little bit better to use as a cutting surface. Um, that one more thing we'll need here is, this is um, candy. I'm going to use a library card actually, but an old credit card or gift card will work really well for what we're going to do is use it for smoothing out our surface when we apply our Mod Podge. And I promise that will make a little bit more sense once we actually get into this project. So hopefully you've got all your materials ready. And if you don't, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to do that while we kind of go over some of this um, PowerPoint here. OK, so I'm, I'm not going to read you all the, um, all the wording on here. I'm just going to kind of click through some of these artists. I want you to pay attention to some of the dates, too. Collage has been around for a while. I think it's easier, or at least for me, um, to look at modern collage artists. Uh, but it's been around for a while, and I think what's interesting about collage in general is that a lot of times it's used to actually tell a narrative. So um, while they might look beautiful or a little bit crazy when you first look at them, I think what's fun is that the longer you look at the pieces of art, the more you're kind of going to get out of them. And something else I think is interesting is uh, adding in words. So, you know, the image on the left is a totally different image if you take out that bottom portion of these are the things we are fighting for. 
So I think collage is fun to tell a story, to kind of dig in, um, get emotional, get deep. Um, it can be really interesting. Um, a lot of, I mean, a lot of people uh, have used it in the past um, for, you know, to tell political stories as well. So there's, there's a lot of cool things you can do with collage. And I think a lot of these artists really evoke emotion when you look at them. This one in particular on the right, I really love the, just the way that the figure on the right, the whole stance, you really get a sense of movement. And this is Hannah Hope. And this is also some of her work here. Kind of just see the, just the different styles here of these two pieces. This artist, I'm not, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, so I'm not going to try, but I found her work to be extremely inspiring. She's a contemporary artist, but as you can see, she uses a lot of pattern, and she even uses um, what appears to be like maybe watercolor paint or gouache paint in her work. Lots of crazy little tendrils and, and a lot of movement in her pieces as well. I think it's, it's interesting just to really kind of focus in on some of these patterns and all the different elements to her work. And I'll be linking this presentation in our recording of this, so don't worry about jotting down these artist names. If you're interested in looking at them later, we'll go ahead and link it in our YouTube channel once this class is published. Um, Eileen, this, this artist is quite interesting. Now, this is more of a painting style collage, so Looks like on the right, she's using maybe a doily, but on the left, this is, this is all paint. So it's kind of interesting to note the different styles of collage, where this, uh, this is paint versus found object collage. This, this artist I find especially intriguing. I think her work is, it's, uh, it, it really makes you pause. Um, so what, she, what she's doing is, um, taking different pieces of faces, a lot of them are her face and her body, and she's sewing them on top of each other to create these new figures. And it, they're kind of, honestly, they're a little bit alarming, um, but I think that's what makes them so intriguing. So just an example, some of the ones uh, the artists we looked at before, maybe the collage was a little more clean. These are clearly like ripped photos or ripped images. So lots of different, lots of different looks. This is the last one we're going to go over. I don't want to get too, uh, do too much of a presentation. I want to actually get in and make some art. Um, but this artist, Ben Giles, very interesting stuff. This is kind of the collage artist that is really spoke to me because I do a lot of uh, similar concepts personally. So he uses magazines, and that's primarily what I use as well. And a lot of what we'll be using will have magazines and postcards and stuff that are similar to what he's using in his collage. This one here, really, I loved it. He creates this whole almost like dollhouse. And the more you look at it in each room, like each room tells a story, and it's not all um, it's not all things you would typically find in a house. Obviously, there's like lightning in one. A McDonald's and guns in one room. So there's like a lot of different stories that he's telling even in this room of this house, which is so fun. And these two, uh, the image on the right, I'm going to show you a couple of my pieces as well. I really like to use vintage magazines with old recipes um, in my art. So I this piece really spoke to me, all these different pieces of fruit and vegetables and bread, you know, with these human legs on them. Just kind of fun. So there's a lot of different ways you can use collage and hopefully this will help you have an idea or just get a little bit inspired about what you might do with some of your stuff. Um, we're gonna pop back over to my workstation here in a moment. I'm going to kind of walk you through. This will be a different class than I've taught before because I'm going to be making a piece of art live. I have no idea what I'm going to make. Um, so I am a little nervous, a little more nervous than I have been for some of these other classes I've taught because I don't have a plan. Um, we're just going to get started and I'm going to show you how I normally will create a collage. 
So I'm going to start by getting my station set up so that I can do some cutting. Um, and the piece I have set out, I actually did want to show you I made with, um, I'll, I'll kind of explain what it is. It's a deconstructed, which just means that I have taken apart something. So I've deconstructed this old Easter card. It was super sappy and it was made out of uh, almost like a, I don't know what the paper type is, someone might know, where uh, like some of the older cards are made out of where it's like, uh, you can see through it, it's almost like a parchment paper maybe. So I thought it was really fun to add on the collage because you can see through it. So I kind of combined that with this advertisement for, I think it's Bernat Yarn, um, to make these ladies hats. So I just kind of made it its own art piece. Um, some, th this one I kind of just made to be pretty some things I make that kind of maybe have a narrative or a statement. But what I'm going to do and what I encourage you to do is, yeah, here you can see where those ladies came from, is just take everything out of your kit. Um, if you don't have a kit, just start flipping through some magazines or pull out the different pieces that you've gathered. Other things I like to have on hand sometimes. Maps work really well. This is like some old wrapping paper. This is some of the paper that I used underneath that collage I showed you. So normally what I do, and it sounds kind of maybe boring, is that I just flip through my materials until I find one piece that inspires me. Now, once I find one piece that just like inspires me, I'm going to pull it and set it aside and consider using that for my collage. Laura? Yeah. Sorry. I just, we had a question from Lisa, it looks like, and Lisa, I'm sorry. I am not, are you asking Vellum? Was that the name that Laura maybe went over? Vellum, yes. This kind of paper? Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so this this stage is, is kind of like just your beginning where you're kind of just pulling aside. For me, a lot of times I'm actually not going through like a stack like this. I'm usually flipping through a magazine. So I'm going to pull out something that I use a lot, which is I have these vintage magazines. You'll notice a lot of pieces that I'm going to show you um have vintage magazine stuff in them so that's what i like to use and i'm very inspired by the 50s 60s and 70s so i love to look through these magazines a because i wish my house looked like like pretty much every every picture in here um and b these magazines if you're interested in vintage crafts at all are so amazing. You can find them. Um, I don't know, you might be able to find them at the idea store. I got this, I got a whole lot of these on eBay um, last year. So this is from spring, summer of 1970. And normally what I do is just start flipping through my magazine until I find something that inspires me. And I think, ooh, I could make something out of that. And then I'm just gonna rip it out or cut it out. If you, I'm serious, if you like crafting at all, this, these magazines are absolutely wonderful. They're large format and the quality of them is just amazing. If, if any of you are watching this that know me as a person, you'll understand that like this is, these pictures are like everything for me. They're so wonderful. I'm thinking I might like to use this person for something. I, the colors are really speaking to me. And if you're going to be using magazine, something I want to, I've ruined some things before. So just to, as a, a, a helpful hint, check the back before you cut something out, just to be sure the back doesn't have something better. Um, I've spliced through some things that I would have really rather had what was on the opposite side. And then you ruined it and it's gone. So. For this particular one, I'm going to go ahead and just cut it out. 
I prefer with older magazines to actually cut with scissors or an exacto knife rather than just ripping it out. The binding tends to be um, it tends to be a little bit fragile, so you run the risk of actually ripping the magazine in half and having things kind of fall apart. So that's not the method I recommend. It, uh, Cindy made a note. Um, well, we had a few comments here. One was that Deb loves to loves the math ideas, which I, I do too. Um, and then also Cindy was pointing out sometimes we get older magazines down in the friend shop. Um, so that's a great idea too. And I know other libraries um, will sometimes offer up magazines and things uh, yearly to, to give away. So great place to check. Absolutely. And I am not opposed to cutting up books. I know I'm a librarian, but I really like to use books and art. So as an example, here's another, this might make somebody laugh, but I found this book at the thrift store and I love the imagery inside it. We have all these vintage, vintage recipes. So, you know, piled with mayonnaise and jello and I just, I find them to be wonderful. So I'll use books like this in my collage as well. But right now I don't really see anything in here that feels really standing out to me. I'm gonna put this Another thing I do, um, I collage, I would say fairly often, and so I have a bag in my, uh, I have a little bit of collage stuff in there of just things I've cut out before that I, I ended up not using, so I may end up using some of those pieces um, in whatever I create tonight, I'm not totally sure. So, Set these things aside, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you my technique for cutting uh, things out in a really precise line. I think that's what can be important and set your collage work aside, like set it apart from more decoupage projects, which are also great, and it's the same exact concept. But if you want your piece to look a little bit more artful, um, actually just taking the time to cut something out really nicely usually it will set your piece apart. So I'm going to clear my space a little bit. Still kind of like the idea of the colors of these two things together. I don't totally know what I would do, but I like the idea of these two pieces together. So we've got a new Valentine's Day card that says Love Johnny and then this model. So I'm actually, I know it seems silly, I'm gonna put my, my neck uh, over because I just think it will look a little better on the camera since it's not covered in my design. So if you're using an exacto knife, that is going to be the most precise way that you can cut your cut your ephemera. Um, and what I normally do, especially if I'm feeling a little rusty, I have maybe done it in a little while, is I'll start with the in a place that I don't feel is going to be as um, important if I mess it up a little bit. So, I mean, it is just cutting, but you kind of just trace around the edge and you want to move slowly. And you want to start, I'm going to start with the leg. And you'll kind of get an idea. I want to also preface exactly knives are very sharp. I have cut myself on many an exacto knife. So if you're planning on using one with this craft, please be careful. You really want to pay attention to the angle that you're cutting. You do not want any fingers right around here in case you slip. So please be mindful of that if you're planning on using an exacto knife for this project. And I'm just going to cut just like that. I'm going to bring my image a little bit closer to the camera so that you can see. Sometimes, if I'm planning on using the image, I will cut slightly in just to make sure I don't get any of this white space um, and I get a nice clean cut. Now, if I was going to be cutting um, the shape out and I was planning on using uh, the white piece, so I just wanted the outline of the, the woman. Does that make sense? Hopefully I'm saying, saying this in a way that makes sense to you. Um, I would actually cut the opposite way 
and I would cut a little bit further on this line so that you didn't see any of her skin or any of her skirt. So depending on which piece you're going to use, you might cut a little bit differently. I have a couple examples here of what I mean. So like on this piece, this is just like a random little piece I haven't used for anything. I actually wanted to use the outlines. I wanted to cut out the clothes and create a new outfit for her. So I just used a pattern I really liked and just taped it to the back and created this kind of new, new outfit, um, which was fun. So I would cut this piece a little bit differently than I'm going to cut this piece because I plan on using the woman. You don't have to use an exacto knife. You can just use scissors if that's all you have. That's totally fine. You can still be pretty precise with scissors, but again, you just want to cut slow. You don't want to get too uh, hasty with it. If your exacto knife isn't super sharp, you'll also start to kind of rip the edge of the magazine if you move too quickly. So. I can, so you can see I'm already starting to kind of pull away from this and get my shape. A lot of collage for me is just zoning into whatever I'm working on and just kind of focusing, focusing on the cutting. I say this in every single class, so if I know a lot of you are returning, but um, I usually will work on a project, especially when I feel like I just need to take a little break, uh, maybe from, you know, the world, and I need to retreat. So a lot of times I'll just uh, sit in my studio and silently work or put on a podcast or some music or something and kind of tune a lot of stuff out. So this is usually like my quiet time. So thanks for sharing that time with me today. Laura, one of the things I think we talked about the last workshop too, and I, I haven't mentioned tonight, but um, if anyone is feeling um, overwhelmed by trying to keep up with the pace or um, it's moving along in a way that you're just feeling like, oh, I can't keep up, uh, please know that we are recording this and it will be offered as a webinar on our uh, YouTube's playlist for Crafty Adults. So, um, you know, this will be shared um, so if you get to a point, you're like, oh, I just got to take a break and stop, you know, know that that is going to be available and you can uh, do it on your own time if you're more comfortable doing so. Absolutely. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, and, and this workshop is a little bit different than some of our other ones. So if, if this is one of your first workshops that you're attending, um, welcome. Um, but a lot of times we have a, a whole like a list of steps and, and you know the project. Um, that we're going to complete, and this time I don't even know the project I'm going to complete, so it's a little bit more interpretational than some of our other ones. So if you just feel more comfortable watching me work and kind of getting ideas, that's totally fine. Um, as an example here, how you can also make your collage stand out, if you're using a figure or if you're using something that would have some negative space, cutting out that negative space is really going to make your piece pop. So I'm gonna, this is where an exacto knife is really handy. You could do it with scissors. Of course, I can show you too. If you wanted to kind of get that cut out with scissors, just kind of lightly fold the inside, do a little snip, and then you would be able to get your scissors in that crevice. Now, I'm not actually gonna cut my full piece out with scissors because I am a lot better at cutting things like this with a knife. Um, so I'm going to do that, but you can do this entire project just with scissors and a glue stick if you really want. So there's different ways you can cut as well. So sometimes you see I'm like picking up my knife and moving my piece. You can also just set your knife down and slowly rotate to get a nice clean line. I usually do a combination of this when I'm working just depending on what I'm doing. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea. There's different techniques you can use for cutting. 
and I could be a little bit of a perfectionist. You can see I've got like a little bit of white space on here. I don't like that, so I am going to trim it up just a little bit. If you want to be careful with that, this is where you can really start ripping if you're using a magazine. I don't know why, but it's super sensitive to just kind of this little snip. Okay, I'm going to set my knife aside right now and show you a little bit about how some of my pieces so you can kind of see how I normally operate. And these might seem really weird to you, and if they do, that's, that's okay. I'm just sharing with you my stuff. So I, for some reason, got really into making these kind of like crazy 60s models pop out of this crazy 60s food. Um, a lot of times I'll work just with color, like I'm very inspired by color. And so that's a lot of times how I start putting pieces together. So with these, I just love the way her top kind of masks the garnish on this. I don't even know these themselves, maybe. And then what they did is use this wood panel and um, actually this mask uh, with masking tape off some lines, and then use acrylic paint to create these stripes, kind of the same color as the pineapples. So this is these are weird, I know, but they're just kind of fun, kind of crazy ladies here. And this one is, I would call a deconstructed ad. So I deconstructed an ad that was for Kraft sandwich cheese. Uh, P.S. They used to have Monterey Jack onion and chive slices, sharp cheddar slices, cheese and bacon slices. So these are like the good old days of processed cheese, I guess. And I just thought it was fun. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just fun. So that's kind of where I'm starting. This is kind of like my style of art. So when I'm starting with this 60s lady, I'm kind of thinking, hmm, what kind of environment is she going to be in? Maybe she'll be in a sandwich. Maybe she'll be out in nature. I don't know yet. So I'm going to share with you is also kind of how you achieve that look where what happened to my screen here that look where something is kind of in front of something else so as an example i've got this little piece i uh, created kind of on the fly earlier today for you so if you're wanting to make it look like like for me here i'm kind of alluding to the fact that maybe this giant is like going to pluck this person right out of the cage, um, which to me is interesting. It's fun. You look at it and you're kind of like, what's going on? Why is that person picking, you know, pulling this lady out of the cage? Um, so to do something like that, right here is just a one-page advertisement that I got out of one of those magazines, um, the needle needlework magazine, and then this piece, this can is actually just came right out of this advertisement here. I can put it back in just so you can kind of see where my brain was. And all I did was trace around the outline of the hand initially with my exacto knife and kind of pulled it away from this piece. And then I was kind of thinking about, okay, if you're a hand and you're like grabbing something, the natural thing to do would be to, of course, separate the thumb from the rest of the hand. So at that point, I just traced around the thumb up until about here. You don't actually want to separate the thumb from the hand. You just want it to be able to move around a little bit. It doesn't totally make sense because of this finger being here, but depending on how you place it, it could still, um, it, it could still pass. <laughs> so then what I did is decided I wanted the hand Kind of grab this lady off the page. So I went ahead and traced the woman with the exact knife. So I just traced as close as I could along the outline until I thought I had gone, you know, far enough down. I didn't need to actually cut her completely off the page. And then all you're going to do is flip, flip her over, and then you just kind of figure out and do a little finesse. 
and figure out where you want it. I knew I wanted to kind of cover up this pen. But you can see here, once you have your pieces cut out, if you're thinking about maybe doing something in this style, you can move it around and kind of figure out what, what works for you. A lot of just moving things around. And what I did actually, which is pretty crazy, is I, I really like the way that this hand looked. I love the idea of picking something up off the page and I thought that's something I'm gonna explore. So I scanned it and I made copies and enlarged it on the library scanner actually. And so now I'm, actually, I'm able to reuse this piece um, for whatever else I want. So consider that if you've got pieces that you think you might want to use, um, you know, a lot of the stuff is unique. So if you want to scan it and digitize it and have a copy, you can totally do that, print it and reuse it immediately. That's brilliant. I love the, the movement of it too with doing it that way. Yeah, I know a lot of a lot of my I, I like preface a lot of that my work's a little bit weird. Um, just because I don't want people to it's okay if this isn't isn't your jam. If you want to use a map and you want to use some old postcards and, and ticket stubs and, and what have you, that's a totally valid way to make a collage. It's just not really my personal style. So I am, where are we at time? It's 7.30, 7.40-ish. So we've got, we've yeah. got five o'clock. I want to um, pause and kind of see, I see you've gotten a lot of tasks. How is everybody doing out there? Do you have any questions or feedback from anybody? Some comments about loving the hand and okay. um, so I think so far so good. Not anything specific as far as not being able to, to follow along or um, I think for me, just watching along, I the creative piece of, yeah, finding what works for you, um, finding your style and identifying that to, to keep it kind of a, a consistent theme. Yeah, and um, what I will end up showing you, so if, if um, how about this, if you have some pieces and you're ready to start actually collaging them and like adhering them to whatever background you want, um, let us know because I do have some tips for you with that. I would not recommend proceeding until we kind of do it together just because I have some um, instruction for you as far as that goes. If you're thinking about what kind of base you'd like to use, a lot of my examples are on a wood panel. So I really like, here's another one, I really like using wood panels as a background because it's so, it's flat and it's, hard, it's a hard surface. Now, I, I didn't tell you to get that and you didn't provide that, so it's not a necessity. You can also use cardboard. You could use cardstock. The uh, example image, pile of stuff now. I used this on a piece of cardboard. Laura, I'm gonna pause you for just a moment. Please do. Um, and yes, Anna mentioned that maybe chats are going directly to you and not the attendee list. So, and Laura is, as she's teaching, it's a little trickier to uh, keep track of chat. So if you are sending a chat, please be sure to send it to either me, the host, um, or to all panelists, if you don't mind. Yes, thank you. Sorry, we maybe should have mentioned that. And maybe... Yeah, that's on me, so I apologize for that. And and that's okay. We, I do, I am seeing your chats now. It's just not, I don't see them on the screen while I'm working because I'm facing, I'm facing a different direction than the computer. So anyways, yeah, Trisha, feel free to just call her. Don't think you're interrupting me and just shout out if people have any um, comments in the chat, it's all good. For those of you that are just joining um, from home, uh, Laura is literally in the room next to me, so I could knock on the wall. <laughs> so I, it's a strange setup, but it works really well. And so uh, thank you for your patience as we still are uh, learning all the uh, technical pieces of the webinar world. Yes, and Zoom's like updating things. So like it looks different for Trisha than it used to. So we're like, why are we doing this? 
<laughs> and then um, we do, uh, Katrina had a question. Um, she likes the idea of the wood base, um, but where would you find something or buy something like that? Absolutely. I am, um, personally, I love to get used stuff. These panels, however, I did not get used. I would first look at a thrift store or the idea store if it were me. Um, these pan I haven't had a lot of luck um, with thrifting anything like this lately. I haven't been doing as much thrifting. These came from Michaels. So if you want to look um, at a craft store, I think you just I think it's just a wood panel canvas, maybe. The, these the brand is Artist Law. They come in packs of uh, sometimes anywhere between two and five, depending on the size. Uh, that's what I personally like to use. Um, you could also use an art, you could use a canvas. Um, you can, I mean, you can make a product on pretty much anything. So you could use a piece of cardstock, a piece of cardboard, another piece of paper. Oh, Art Coop has been a great suggestion. Yes, I thank know. you. I should have mentioned Art Coop first. We love our coop here. <laughs> um, yeah, birch, they're usually a, a light uh, weight wood for sure. Yeah, and you can make appointments at our coop and go get some supplies. So we recommend popping over there if you can. They'll curate kits for you. That's what I've been doing over quarantine. So I was like getting some kits from them. It was fun. Okay. So how, how are we, are people ready for um, attaching things? Are they ready for me to demo that? Or do you want to kind of wait and uh, look through some of your materials first? I'm happy to keep. Why don't you type uh, a simple Y for yes or an in for no. If, if you're not feeling, if you're feeling great, we're getting, a, we're getting some yeses here. Um, yeah, it looks like Laura, okay. we are ready to move on. Okay, I can just show you. And this, this, um, let me grab a couple. I'm going to see what do I want to actually do here. I'm going to use this board. So maybe what I'm going to do as far as collage, I was interested in using this kind of like wagon. So I have the idea of maybe having her, you kind of see this is my process, maybe having her pop out of the wagon. That kind of goes along with some of my my other styles. Let's see here. I think I'm gonna do it. So to have to do something like this where I want her to actually be popping out of this little wagon. Just grab my mat. And what I'm gonna do is kind of cut along. Let's see. Do I want her? Maybe I want one of these parts to kind of pop up over her. I don't want it just to look like she's behind this, like, very machine cut card. So I think I'm just going to kind of create my own little shape so it looks like she's kind of in the hearts. So. I love that idea. It makes it more dimensional that way. Yeah, we'll see if it actually, sometimes it's, it's kind of fun. Sometimes things really work how you want them to. Sometimes you cut into them and you're just, you're not feeling it. And that's just the way it goes. That's why I end up with like a whole tub of collage supplies that are like half cut. Kind of popping this out. Here's a technical question. How often do you have to replace the blade, do you think, for your X-Acto knife? Hmm. Great question. Uh, you'll be able to tell very commonly for me, and this might just be the way that I cut, what I'll actually do is snap the tip of the knife off. So once you snap the tip, you're not really able to get that. You can still cut okay but you're going to have a hard time getting into those little grooves like corners sure so i snap the tip pretty much immediately you can change it um and then i'll ro rotate that out and use it for other maybe not so precise collage you know work or um whatever you can use an exacto just for a lot of different projects so i might use it if i'm cutting up some of my clay pieces or whatever so maybe i would you you can tell 
when it starts to get dull too, you, you might not be able to see it on the blade, but when you cut with a brand new knife and when you cut with one that maybe you've used for a few weeks, you'll be able to tell. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So no exact. This one I can I can tell too because it's a cardboard card. I, I am kind of a perfectionist when it comes to the cutting. You can see I'm kind of getting some of these little kind of not cutting super exact and not loving that. But we're gonna roll with it. So okay, now I feel like she's kind of popping out. This is okay, this is kind of gonna be a fun example. Now that I'm getting into it. What I want though for this, I want her arm to kind of overlap this. So now we're going to kind of work on making it look like she's actually in this part. So then what I'm going to do is come back over to her and work on separating her arm from the rest of her body. What a phrase out of context for anyone. I love that idea. So you'll see from what I'm doing, it is a lot of, like once you kind of get going, it's a lot of finesse. You're like putting something together, taking it apart, putting something else together, taking that apart, deciding this doesn't work, and then you move on to something else. There's just a lot of back and forth. So I'm kind of liking this, but again, I think I need to separate out this other hand um, and arm so maybe it comes over the cart. Mm -hmm. Let's see. This is where it gets a little tricky too. I don't want to cut all the way over here because then what I'm going to do is completely separate her arms from the rest of her body. So I need to leave them attached at least in some small way. So I think I'm just going to work on maybe from her hand over here. I'm not going to worry about being too exact because the part can be covered up. Okay. So then we're going to come back. And we're going to come back through here. Kind of like how that is. I kind of like having the heart kind of right by our hands is something that makes that now feel a little bit. I don't. It tells a little bit more of a story, um, but what I don't like is I don't want to see any part of her dress here, and I actually don't know if I want to see her legs or not, so I think first I'm just going to kind of slice this and slice this so we don't see it underneath the chart. So for that, doing that way. And this actually put my thing all together. Okay. So now I kind of have my my piece. Whatever that whatever this is, I'm getting somewhere. I'm getting something. I'm kind of thinking I like the colors of this hand again with the pink. So I don't know, maybe I can find a way to add this in here. Like maybe it's like the hand is almost like handing a card. I don't know. Let's we're gonna we're gonna see how it goes. Now it's kind of it's a lot of finesse. So I'm also gonna cut. I don't love the ripped look on this here, so I'm going to kind of slice the edge of this off. Again, if you like that, go for it. I think I would maybe if there was something else ripped in this collage, but there's not, so to me it stands out. Okay, so say this is my piece, this is what I am, you know, I'm satisfied with the way this is. My tip for you is if you've got several pieces together and you're happy with where they're at, grab some tape, just a little bit, 
of scotch tape works or masking tape. I like scotch tape because it's uh, there's no, it's so thin, you're not gonna be able to see through. So what I do, I kind of fold the two pieces and then I'm gonna put just a little piece of tape somewhere so that I can move it around a little bit and not have to worry about everything falling apart. So now, how to pick this up and not worry about anything moving around on me. And same thing, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this hand. I just I'm feeling the hand today, so what I'm gonna do here is that I kind of think about how I want to position it on the board. Or whatever surface you're using. I kind of Sometimes I'll do it where maybe the hand will be flat or whatever I'm using will get there so you just cut off like that. It'll be flat up against the side. Sometimes I don't care that much. Maybe I'll do something like this for this one. I kind of like how that looks. Um, and I think I like her leg in this as well. I was debating, you know, chopping her legs off, but I think it's true. So I'm satisfied with that. So again, I'm going to grab a little piece of tape. Tricky sometimes. Just get a little bit. And this is extra security. You don't have to do this. You don't have to add the tape. For me, I have found it really helps me to be certain that everything is in the position it needs to be. Getting a few nice comments about the legs and the fingers is a, it's pretty great. Good. It reminds me of, um, oh my goodness, what is it? Uh, King Kong reaching in and yes. plucking. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I, uh, I like, I really like that hand when I saw it and I, I actually haven't experimented too much with like scanning things and recreating them. A lot of the stuff I use are like one of a kind pieces. So I'm actually excited. Excited to do some scanning and recreating of some of these fun little elements. Well, you know, and that that brings up a point. When you said you scanned that and saved it for the future, I thought, well, that's brilliant. Why why would you not, you know, repurpose that and, and make multiple copies of that? Yeah, and, and something too, which um, I think would be fun, especially if you're thinking like if, if you're an artist or you want to be an artist, just make a series. Like, just make a series. It's great. Um, Make a series, so I can make a series out of this uh, hand, like grabbing multiple things and, you know, one is cool, but think about having like six of these and different scales and different people all getting snatched up by the same hand. Like you start to create a narrative with that. It doesn't, it's not just one person. Now you're like maybe as a viewer looking at this going like, why is that hand taking all these women, these people or these things? Like what are they doing with them? So you can kind of start to get a little bit creative in your brain about like, what's happening. Okay, so I want to I want to add this to my board. So if you're not paying attention like to the screen right now and you're just working, I would suggest just taking a moment and watching how I'm going to add these to the board um, because I'm going to show you how to add them and create a nice flat look. Anytime you get paper wet, it's going to crinkle, it's going to wrinkle, and it's going to want to rip. So this part, you want to kind of be quick, and you want to be direct. If you're, if you're messing around with it, your paper is wet, and you're going to end up ripping it. So this is where we're going to use our handy dandy library card. We're going to use our Mod Podge, and we're going to use our foam brush. Now, I usually use a large one, so if you use large one, like this, you can just dip your brush in. These smaller ones, if you have this, they have a little squeeze top. So I'm just going to squeeze the Mod Podge onto the board. So first thing we're going to do, I'm going to kind of outline it for you and then we're going to do it. Because we're going to squeeze a little bit of Mod Podge onto the board. And then what we're going to do is use our credit card or library card. And we're going to very lightly 
match everything down. You're gonna need to be careful if you're doing something like I am here where I've got a lot of loose edges. You don't wanna bend or tear something. So we're just gonna kind of push everything down and get it nice and flat with the Mod Podge. So let me show you how we're gonna do that. I will usually work a little bit at a time. So maybe I'm gonna start with the bottom. And then I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to smooth it out a little bit. Mod Podge dries clear. So even though it looks um, a little bit matte and a little bit like a film, it will dry clear. So you don't need to worry about, um, you don't need to worry about anything kind of clouding your image. Sorry, it took me to focus. Now I'm like focused on what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna get just a little part of it down here, kind of blot it, and then I'm just gonna start smoothing with my, my credit card. You can see I'm gonna have to get the car since I'm layering as well. So again, I'm just gonna put a little bit here. Look at that big glob, I'm gonna leave that big glob so you can really see here. Um, come on, buddy. As you're doing this, I'm thinking, no wonder all my collages over the past years have looked terrible. I didn't do any of the steps properly. Well, I, I tell you what, I um, I, I, I don't remember if I mentioned this. I really started doing some collaging last year. I probably hadn't done it since, like, right out of high school or in high school. And this is not how I did it then. And I, I have some collages even that I've done recently, like, uh, let me show you one of the ones I, I showed you here. I, all of this, I didn't intend for that to happen. I kind of like how it looks because the foil, like, kind of looks like foil. But that was all because I didn't smooth it out properly the first time. It wrinkled. And then since it was wet and then I unwrinkled it, it took away the ink off the page. So. It doesn't always end up perfect the first time. Okay, so now I'm, I've only done like a couple square inches over here. And that's all you're going to just keep doing throughout your piece. And you're going to kind of, what, what is cool is that what, since you're using the credit card to smooth out, you're also going to get a really light film over the top without even really trying, um, which is going to kind of help seal everything in. Keep everything nice and smooth. So again, I'm being generous and I'm not being like very precise right now with how I'm adding the Mod Podge with the bottom part here. We have a comment from Carolyn. Um, she says she hasn't tried it yet, but um, because she has always used Mod Podge, but the owner of Gilbert Gallery suggested that spray glue is less like less likely to bubble. Have you utilized spray glue, Laura? I have not for collage. I have for other things. I don't know if it's the same stuff. I've used like a spray adhesive. Mm -hmm. I personally didn't have that much success with it myself, but I don't know. I'm not convinced I was doing it right. When I wonder how the control is on something when you're spraying it too. That would be my bigger concern, I think. Yeah. What, so if, if you haven't done any kind of collage using this method where you're using a card of some kind, try it and see what you think. I have found it gets things pretty smooth. If you're working in uh, small sections and you're being, you're not using so much Mod Podge that it's um, uh, pooling or anything, you can get it pretty smooth. Here, I'm going to start my layer underneath. The other thing, too, if I work on this, is you don't have to, from my experience, you don't need to get Mod Podge underneath every single surface because you're going to kind of seal it in. I don't know if that makes sense, but I, like, I haven't gotten a ton underneath this card, but that's okay with me because the card is a very flat, thick surface, so I don't think I need to usually get a lot of glue underneath it. 
So that one's more stable is what you're saying. So it doesn't necessarily need as much adhesive from the back. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm going with for this one at least. Now, if you are using, I know you said it dries clear. Um, if you're using, let's say, uh, photos, is that going to put a, a film over those photos and kind of take away the shine? So the Mod Podge is actually has some luster to it. This kind that I that we have is a satin, I believe. Oh no, this one's a gloss luster. So it has a little bit of a sheen to it, which is kind of what gives it that nice polished look. Um, once you're, because we'll go, what we'll do is go over this at the end and kind of peel it all off. So with a photo, it shouldn't really matter too much. I'm going to quickly work. You can kind of see here, my face on her is kind of starting to uh, kind of put your wrinkle. So I can see this what I mean. I kind of got to work fast. You can see I'm kind of removing almost like a squeegee is what we're doing. So I'm removing quite a bit of Mod Podge that's kind of coming out. Yeah, you really don't need a whole lot. Like it, it goes, it goes far. Yeah. So I get a little nervous when I get up to something like a face where it's really obvious if you kind of stick back it up. So I did get a little wrinkle down here with the hand, but I think I can see something I've done that maybe I wouldn't have done had I thought about it. I think I should have cut the back of the card off because it is kind of standing up because the thickness is different. So if I were to redo this, I would kind of cut off the back of the card just to, so you guys know. So you all know. All right, looking pretty good. I need to get the hand back here. I haven't experienced this, but um, depending on the materials you use, um, you do want to be mindful about what, um, you know, you mentioned, will, the, will you lose some luster with the photos? You may or may not, if you're, whatever you're working on has ink on it, you could run the risk of the ink kind of smearing a little bit. Again, that depends on what you're using. This card has ink on it, like from an ink pen. It did not smear, but it, I think it can happen. So you do want to be mindful of how much Mod Podge you're using for that reason. Here. I'm getting somewhere at least. Anybody have any questions? And don't forget if, if you're having trouble with doing the chat, you know, raise your hand and I can uh, allow you to speak if that works out better for you. Yeah, or even if you have like a comment, if you want to share something about your piece um, or something you're learning as you're working, uh, this is a collaborative space. Um, I know how to make a collage, but I'm not necessarily an expert. You might teach me something and you might teach everybody else something, so don't hesitate to raise your hand. So something to consider as well, um, as, as an artist, you're always that uh, want to consider the edge of whatever piece you're working on. So like with the painting, you want to finish off your edge, that gives it that clean polished look. So with your collage, depending on what surface you're using, you might consider that as well too. I could wrap her legs around the bottom and then I kind of like, again, I just be pulling your eye in a different direction, like down further. So I might do that. Um, you could also, my hand didn't wrap around, so if there's consistency, I could have everything have a nice crisp edge here. I could also have my collage kind of leap off of the page. So there's a lot of different stuff you can do. Thanks, Jessica. Yeah, the, uh, she said they're, they're enjoying all the vintage materials, stamps, random photos, postcards. Um, as you might have noticed, Laura, Laura likes a little bit vintage um, in her world. 
I like a vintage eclectic. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I, I actually, I didn't know what to expect um, when we were getting these materials sourced from the idea store. I, they created these kits, so I had no idea what materials they were going to be, and I had so much fun looking through what they provided for all of you. So I hope you love it. There's like this, I got a pattern. There's like little bingo cards in some of them, wrapping paper, stamp, ticket. You know, I have to say those uh, old patterns, it makes me very nostalgic for my great grandmother who was quite the seamstress. So those are pretty fantastic. Oh. So something fun like two. So really, if I, if we're pretending here that this collage is exactly what I want and I don't want to add anything else, the only, the last step is just going to be to wait. I want to wait for it to dry, so maybe wait about 10 minutes or so. Then my project will dry very quickly. And then what I'm going to want to do is do a top coat. You can see here, since I'm using a plain wood panel, you can see where I've got Mod Podge and you can see where I don't. It doesn't look very professional. So to finish it off, I'm just going to do a little skim coat, a thin coat over the whole thing, and that's going to clear everything up so it all looks nice and shiny. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to let this dry a little bit, and I'm going to consider on this piece what I want to add because this doesn't feel quite done to me, but I don't totally know what I would want. So this is, again, in my collage process. I would wait to actually adhere this until I knew exactly, and I'd be like playing around with different things, and like maybe I'd be like, oh, I wonder if I should add these flowers somewhere. Like they kind of have the colors in this image that I like. So if I hadn't already, you know, glued this down, maybe I would uh, position the flowers so they were kind of going around her. Who knows? I actually don't hate doing something like that, even though it covers up the card. I'm not going to do it, but I don't hate it. So, another thing you, you can consider too, like I've got some words in here, happy Valentine's Day, but, you know, adding words into a collage usually kind of creates a little bit more of a narrative or more of a direction, so, you know, this is going to look totally different if you're flipping through your magazine or your whatever and you find some crazy phrase that you want to use. It's going to change the whole meaning. So that's what I think is so fun. There's so many different possibilities. Um, the other thing, too, uh, I'm going to throw out here right now is we're at about 8.10, so maybe at about 8.20. Um, we'll reach out and see if anybody wants to um, share their project, we can um, get you in our webinar as a panelist. So uh, we'll have you actually share your screen and you can show us your collage project. Um, no pressure if you don't want to, but I thought I'd give you a little advance notice if anybody wants to, you know, run and uh, whatever, make their space presentable. <laughs> Hey, Laura, I have another question. I'm just going to keep sure. throwing questions at you. Um, at, in the way that I was taught how to do things, um, you'd water down the Mod Podge. Is that a bad, good, or indifferent type of? I have no idea. Okay. I have, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, it's a water base, so it makes sense that you could water it down for sure. I don't know what the reasoning was behind that. And again, I am definitely, as we talked earlier, I my uh, decoupage and collage days are sad in comparison to the abilities that uh, Laura has. So, oh. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's just, it's fun. Like, I, I think too, with like a project like this, there's a lot you can do with it if you wanted to. Um, I had some friends over the lockdown actually sent me some cards they made where they, uh, you know, collage the front of it. Um, you could make cards, you, can, you could cover a, a wooden or cardboard box or something. There's a lot of things you can do. It doesn't just have to be like a flat surface either. You can, um, you can do 3D objects. You can, I've seen some amazing tutorials where people uh, like collage on a tabletop. 
and then uh, I don't know if the top, I don't think the top is Mod Podge, maybe it's like an epoxy, but so you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. It doesn't even have to be um, like flat surfaces. But like you say, it's a way, it, it can be a form of almost scrapbooking as well, too, you know, if you do the maps and tickets and, and things that, you know, memorabilia and, and try to do that as a way to display. Absolutely. And you can do collage, too. Like this style that I'm teaching, of course, is with the montage. You don't have to use that at all. If you're wanting to preserve tickets or some sort of memorabilia, you can always just take, um, like this, a, some masking tape or some painter's tape and put a little donut on the back of whatever and you know collage your pieces that way if you're putting it under glass it's going to all stay in place anyway because it's got the pressure between the glass so there's lots of different things you can quote collage it doesn't have to sure Katrina has a question of um, what do you do with your finished collages do you frame them display them do you have a something that you like to do with them specifically some of them I have displayed in my little studio in my home. Um, some of them are just like in a pile. <laughs> some I have in frames. Um, like, let me show you. I have a couple. Let me um, grab the one. I'll show you. I like on this wooden one. I just put a couple of command strips, like the Velcro kind that you can buy that are for frame photos. And so I actually just velcro them technically to my wall with these command strips. Um, some of them I have kind of just displayed about. Some like, like I'll show you a couple here. These are a little bit more personal. They're not necessarily what I would consider like art that I would want to share necessarily with lots of people, but I use, um, these are some art pieces. Like this is like super chaotic one, right? It's not as like, artful as some of my other pieces, but I use them sometimes as a way of like journaling or processing different feelings and just different emotions I'm experiencing. So like these pieces, I have been working on the Enneagram, if any of you know the Enneagram, in the last couple of years, and I was kind of trying to mess around with visually representing my healthy version of myself and then my unhealthy version of myself. So this one is a more healthy version of myself. And this one's like way more chaotic and, and maybe a little bit more melancholy, which really speaks to my healthy and unhealthy selves. <laughs> so you can use it for a lot of different ways. You don't necessarily have to like make these to display or show anybody. You can make them just for yourself. When I think you hit a, a really strong point is, you know, this can be um, something that's relaxing for you, therapeutic for you. Um, you know, if, it, if it's stress inducing, that, that works against that. But, um, you know, it can be time that you spend just relaxing and doing something fun and creative. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think, too, there's just so many possibilities and so many things you can do. Like, you could do this kind of project with children, you could do it with older adults, um, maybe not so much with the exacto knife, of course, but you could still cut things out or rip things and collage them together. So I think it's an all ages project. Um, you can kind of tailor it based on your audience. All right, what I'm gonna do now is just give you an idea of, um, I'm just gonna coat over this with the Mod Podge, but I'm gonna show you. I'm touching it, my project and it feels mostly dry. I am regretting, I'll, just to be honest with you, I'm regretting a little bit. I think I should have added a little more glue underneath the card than I did, but I'm gonna roll with it. I like for everything to be here to be nice and flush and sealed on this side. You can see it's not as sealed, so it's not gonna be quite as flat. Anyway, just being honest, this is a live, <laughs> a live thing. Here's what I'm going to do to kind of, what I'm calling uh, top coat, skin coat, whatever. I'm going to do some Mod Podge here. And then I'm just going to quickly take my foam brush. 
and do a light coat over the whole thing, edge to edge. And what this is going to do is you can look to the side, kind of like what I was doing where I'm holding it up. If you kind of bend over um, and kind of look at your image from the side, you can see um, what has the Mod Podge and what does it. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see. It's almost completely clear. And you're not pushing very hard, I don't believe. Is that correct? Not too hard. Hard, I would say a little bit harder than I was doing with the credit card, just because everything is kind of um, adhered to the panel right now. I'll put a little bit more. I'm trying to see the edges are missing a little bit. So I'm, I'm maybe a little bit more aggressive with the foam brush than I would do with a paintbrush as well, just because that foam isn't going to leave as many brush strokes. Sure. I'm amazed how quickly that dries. It, it, you're not using, you're using like so little, it, it dries pretty quick. Um, where you will run into trouble, so I have found, is if you do the top coat too soon after, you're, you're going to get some wrinkling. So you want to make sure it's dry before you add your top coat. You could also, if you don't, if you have a paintbrush, not a foam brush, which again, totally fine. You could take your card and you could again, once you've kind of done a little, you can run across the top of your card again. And that's going to get it extra smooth. Do you think this is what the library was intending when they created all these beautiful library cards and all these fun colors? I'm sure that's exactly what they were thinking. <laughs> I'm sure someone's going to use this for a craft project later on. So multi-use. Multi-use. Multi See, if you want to update your color, now you put a use for your old card. Um, I'm going to kind of stick this edge down. I think I want to. So all I'm going to do to do that, as you can see here, it's kind of focusing. I'm going to fold that down. And I'm actually going to just add a little bit to the back. I'm just kind of podge, podge the back. And now I've got that nice edge. And you can see when I tilt it, this does have a little sheen to it. It does really make a difference to do the whole thing over the top like that. Yeah, I, I think in my opinion, I really love Mod Podge. I know some people, like my partner, whenever he walks in the room, if I've been using the Mod Podge, he, like, he thinks it smells so strong. I like love the smell of Mod Podge. It's so nostalgic for me. I just remember like, being in a high school art class. And I love it. Um, any questions? We're at about 8.20, so I do want to um, invite you all to share your project if you'd like to. Hopefully we can figure it out with the Zoom update. I think we can. Um, yeah, so just uh, type in the chat box if you'd like me to um, extend you the power to share uh, your image. Yeah, and I all right, Deborah's, yeah. Deborah is not shy, Deborah. All right, bear Good. with me, Deborah, as I, I figure out how to make you a panelist, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want you all to feel empowered to join in if you want, because I, and again, if you've attended, I say, we say this like every time, we do miss being able to meet in person, and this is a way that we can, you know, still, um, still gather together and see and get inspired by everyone else's artwork. And that was Deborah Erickson, correct? Sorry. Yes. Okay. I'm going to pop back in here as well. And ask me if you have any questions in the chat, please feel free to ask them, even though we're going to be sharing some people's um, pieces. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any collage or... Deborah, I think I have given you the power to share. There you are. Okay. I don't know what you can see. That is beautiful, oh, Deborah. Wait, 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 wait. It is... I don't know if you can see it all. Yes. It says, let's, 
your spine be loose like seaweed. <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. I'm still cutting out because I want to cut around her. And then I have some paper that looks, that looks just, I just lost it. But anyway, I have some paper that I want to put on the background to make, to make it look like water. Yes, wonderful. And I, and I kind of like the circular motion. Yeah. I, I love the, like, even with the different, because I can't, put the, it's like a, we've got a, like a swimmer, and then is there like a, some fins in there too? Yeah, the fins yeah. belong to this animal at the bottom. Yeah, there we go. No, I love it. There's definitely a sense of movement with that piece, which I really like. Okay, thank, thank you so much, Deborah. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. Hello. Hello. All right. Oh, I'm not seeing you. Yeah, there you go. There oh. we are. Seeing you. If you want to hold those up for us. Yeah, the lighting here isn't great, but this is. It's, super it's good there. Oh, that looks great. Cool. Let's. If we stop talking for a second, I think it'll full screen their video. I think yeah. every time we talk, it brings it back to us. Okay. Well, um, do you want to say anything about this one? No. 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 It's free bottom. They're all yeah. looking at a landscape. <laughs> Playing with space, I guess. The interact, interacting, and yeah. It's there's... about uh, the male gaze. They're all looking. <laughs> I love how you used um, at the, in the figure in the middle how you use the technique where you like cut out around and then you've got like a different thing on their head. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I found this. I found this picture of uh, of of Babe Ruth. Um, and he's, he's, uh, he, he put, he, uh, he put this composer into a chokehold. <laughs> and I, uh, and, uh, the vocab, well, these are vocab words from a Spanish English flashcard on his car, on his cap, it says suspicion. And on his, it says distrust. I love it. Yeah. I love it. See, and I love how even with your pieces, like with that piece, if you didn't have the words, I would say it would have kind of a different meaning to it even. So like once you throw in words and collage, it really kind of dictates how the viewer perceives your art. So I yeah, love it. This is literally underneath here, sort of the, his, the arm that's holding the baseball bat is, it was cut out and, and put over on top of the other guy's lapels. And then the lapels are back on top of his arm here. So I love it. That. But he's not suffering. I mean, he's, he's just, <laughs> She's kind of annoyed and a little bit suspicious. He does look annoyed. He yeah. does have those eyes of annoyance there. That's well that, done. That's okay, awesome. okay, Babe Ruth, you got me. That's. <laughs> you want to say a little about what you, you want to say anything about you? No. Okay. This is what Adrian made. Oh, I love that too. Yeah. Each of the. Eye. Each of the heads in this. Each of the heads in this fairy tale has been replaced. That's about it. And then there's a lady at the bottom. That's wonderful. I love the incorporation of words too. I, I think that really adds to it. Yeah, yeah. They were the basis of it, I guess. The Muggins family too were pleased. My son, his mother cried, and Daddy Mouse just looked at him and blew his nose with pride. <laughs> I love it. I love Great it. Job. Thank you so much for sharing, guys. Um, it looks like, okay, I do have. All right, I'm going to mute you guys if that's all right. Sure. Bye. Thank you so much for joining yeah. the Papowski family. I'm scared to remove anybody from the panelists because I don't know what happens to them. Okay, um, then I believe, oh my gosh, sorry, I'm trying to see who else. And I'm looking at the chat as well here now. So Is it me. Sujata Day, did you, or Carolyn? Let's see, we've got Mara. Mara says they haven't glued their images yet, but they took a picture. Sure, yeah. We Mara, love okay, great. Let me go. Uh oh, it's upside. No, it looks good for it looks good for us. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna take it in and not talk so that it will um let your image through the full screen for everybody, and then we we'll discuss it. Okay. Let's see if it'll. Mara, say Mara, Mara say something so it will pop up. There. 
I spotlighted you. Go ahead and hold it up for us. Yeah, nothing's glued yet, but okay. it's it looks great. I'll, Thank I'll you. The future. Yeah, it looks it looks great, and it looks like you're in a, your own little craft room or something in there. It's my office. My it looks nice. Everything. It's it looks a big like mess. space. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining. Thank you for showing us your class, sure. and I hope everything goes well with uh, getting it all nice and glued yeah. down. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. All right, Laura, you are back to being spotlighted. I hope I didn't miss anyone if you wanted to share. Thank you for your patience as, as um, I work through that with the technology. <laughs> Yes, as always, thank you for your patience with that. We it like you don't know what to what to predict these days. So no, it changes really weekly or sometimes daily. So. Okay, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna wrap it up. But if anyone has any last minute questions or comments, now's the time to go ahead and throw them in the chat for us. Um, thank you for joining our collage workshop. Hopefully, you at least learned a little bit about maybe some tricks to the trade. Um, and maybe you'll have some fun working on a collage uh, in your own spare time now. Thank you for tuning in to CU Wise TV. Hope you enjoyed the show. This video can be accessed anytime on youtube.com. In the YouTube search bar, type in UPTV6 and look for their microphone logo. We hope you will join us again next week for more local, engaging content designed specifically for Champagne.